So um, hello and welcome to this webinar on the BCS Foundation Certificate in User Experience. And over the next hour, uh, what I'm aiming to do is give you a thorough understanding of the BCS certification scheme. And for the first 20, 25 minutes, I wanted to give you some background on the certificate and then we'll spend the rest, the rest of the time getting some questions. So in terms of the things I'll be covering, first of all, I wanna make sure you can find out why the certification scheme exists. And then I want to make sure you understand that there are these links between the syllabus and the usability standard, ISO 9241. I also wanted to give you an opportunity to hear how people who hold the certificate have applied what they've learnt. And I wanted to give you the opportunity to practice the various question types that come up in the exam. Uh, but the second part of the webinar is really for questions. So what I want to do is help you decide if this is the right kind of certification scheme for you. So you can ask me anything about the scheme in that part of the webinar. So there's lots of great content, so let's dive in. I thought I'd start by explaining why the certification scheme exists. And I want to start with a confession. And the confession is that when I used to hear people argue for certification in user experience, I kind of shook my head and I thought, you know, we can't even agree on a definition of user experience. So how can we certify it? And I was a bit, a bit suspicious of certification. I thought it might just be a way of creating a kind of a closed shop to exclude people who kind of aren't in the club. So why did I change my mind? Um, well, um, first I worked with a, um, a, a client uh, that uh, was working in the field of user experience. Um, and the client that I was working with had some, some issues that they wanted um, to address. Um, in the first one in particular, they, they were asking for certification. They wanted to train some of their product teams so they could do some basic UX activities like user research and usability testing. And I told them, you don't need certification to do that. But for this firm, certification was important. They saw certification as establishing a kind of a development path for people and also for specifying a minimum level of competence. And they already used certification schemes in other areas of the IT department they had, like business analysis, for example. And they were surprised that there was no industry-wide scheme already in place. And I hadn't realized that was important before. So that kind of caused me to shift my perspective. Um, and the second thing that made me change my mind was I began to realize that we need more foot soldiers. So without a certification scheme, we're basically a, a secret society where only the people who've worked in the field for years who all know the conventions and the language and the culture of UX. It's only kind of them that are able to contribute. It kind of creates a barrier to entry. And it also creates a culture where we have kind of rock star UX designers who know the secret handshake. But right now, looking at the state of product design, UX rock stars clearly aren't enough. If they were, there wouldn't be so many rubbish user interfaces around. And what the user experience field needs is more foot soldiers, you know, people whose role is simply to convince their product teams to do the obvious, you know, focus on users and their tasks, design iteratively, run usability tests. If more development teams work that way, you know, doing the simple stuff, we could transform the lives of ordinary people overnight. So realizing that this would help create more foot soldiers, that was another thing that got me shifting my point of view. So another factor in my change of mind was realizing that the argument, you know, we don't know what UX is, so how can we certify it, is nonsense. So, you know, it's true there are different points of view about good practice in user experience, but we have a standard ISO 9241 part 210 that's been debated by a team of international experts and it sets out the kind of the fundamental competencies of our field and standards, especially international standards, provide 
an independent view of best practice. So standards makers have to achieve consensus and that consensus or the achieving of it anyway, helps tone down some of the kind of wilder claims of some people that work in UX. It means that the resulting standard represents good practice. And the fourth part of the jigsaw for me was realizing that my opinion was irrelevant. So the genie was kind of out of the bottle. So I run some online courses on UX. There's a, over about 20,000 people taking those courses. And on a daily basis, I get emails from students asking about certification. I see students discussing the merits of the different vendor-based schemes and deciding to take one or other exam. But you know, as much as I respect the various training organizations that offer these certificates, it can't be a good idea for the organization that does the training to also be the organization that does the certifying. You know, there's an obvious kind of conflict of interest that needs to be addressed, even if the genie is out of the bottle. And that's where BCS come into the picture. So BCS is an independent organization that certifies IT professionals. So they've been around for over 60 years. They've got an international presence. You can take their certifications in over 200 countries and their certification schemes are developed with industry experts and they're based on best practice. But what's unique about the BCS certificate is that you don't need to attend a training course to take the examination. So that makes it very different from all the vendor-based UX certification schemes you'll hear about because those are awarded by firms as part of their training courses. Now, I'm sure these firms maintain the highest levels of integrity, but you know, when looked at from the outside, let's say it's a recruiter looking at your CV, it's not a surprise that people often see this as a bit like marking your own homework. So BCS created the foundation certificate to help more people speak the language of user experience. It's a foundation level certificate. So it's aimed at people who are new to the field. So this might be someone who wants to transition from their current job role to a career in user experience, or uh, it might be a self-taught user researcher or a UX designer. You kind of want to check that their knowledge of the core concepts of UX, how they match up against best practice. So BCS developed the syllabus around the International Usability Standard, ISO 9241, part 210. So we can be sure that the certificate captures best practice. And to gain the certificate, you need to take a one hour multiple choice examination. So I'll talk more about the examination later and give you the opportunity to practice some of the questions. So let's look um, at the syllabus in a bit more detail. So the syllabus has got nine key areas and you can see those on this slide. So the first section of the syllabus contains the guiding principle. So these are about appreciating why it's important to take the user's perspective um, and understanding the key principles of user-centered design. And those key principles are taken from the international standard I mentioned. So you can see that this standard is really at the heart of the certification scheme. The next section of the syllabus is about user research. So it emphasizes that the most powerful data for design comes from field visits where researchers observe the way users achieve their goals, but they do that by observing people doing real world behavior. Um, the next section of the syllabus is titled Illustrating the Context of Use, and it builds upon the user research section to show how data from field visits is used to understand users and their goals. Uh, the measuring usability section of the syllabus is about defining usability in terms of um, three components, effectiveness, efficiency, and satisfaction. And it describes the value of validated learning and why iterative design has value. 
Now the syllabus then moves into UX design. So until now, it's been very much about UX research, but as it transitions into design, it starts with information architecture. And this part of the syllabus shows how to organize information using methods like card sorting. And then the syllabus covers interaction design. So it describes different user interface patterns. Um, it covers best practice in the use of user interface controls like check boxes, radio buttons, drop down menus, and so on. Uh, the next section of the syllabus covers the core principles of visual design and how they can be used to remove clutter from user interfaces and so make things look simpler on screen. And it also describes the main eye tracking gaze patterns that have been discovered when people are viewing web page content. Uh, the um, penultimate part of the syllabus is about high and low fidelity user interface prototyping. So what the BCS syllabus emphasizes is that a prototype can take many forms from paper to electronic. And it points out that for the purpose of um, a, uh, the purpose of a prototype is really about supporting validated learning by asking and answering design questions. And then the final section of the syllabus covers how to evaluate the usability of systems. So the syllabus covers the steps required to run an in-person thinking aloud usability test, but it's not just about usability testing. Evaluation can include methods like heuristic evaluation and A-B testing. And as you can see, it's a pretty comprehensive syllabus, but how useful is it? You know, what are people who hold the certificate think? Um, so um, last year, I contacted about 300 people who'd taken and passed the BCS Foundation Certificate. Um, and each of those people had sat the exam after attending one of my face-to-face -face training courses. And I asked everyone a single question by email, which was this, what impact has attaining the BCS Foundation Certificate in UX had on your job? And people were free to write as much or as little as they wanted. Some people wrote a few paragraphs, some people just wrote a short sentence. But I did some analysis on the responses and I identified about 10 common themes that came out of the responses that I got back. Now, I'm not gonna cover all of those now, but I did just want to share five of those themes with you so you can see what other people feel are the benefits of holding the certificate. So the first theme was that holding the BCS Foundation Certificate helps improve your career. So this person said, I'd never held a position in UX design or research. Once I had the UX certification, I put it at the top of my CV. I got a job as a UX researcher with a London company within a short few months of completing the course. I'm certain that holding that certificate had a big impact because it's the UX job agents that read your CV first before they put you forward for a role. Now, another finding was that holding the Foundation Certificate boosts your credibility with the development team. So this person said, since attaining the certificate in UX, I feel it's helped to demonstrate to my wider team the skills that I have. People also said that gaining the certificate gives you a kind of a broad knowledge of UX. So this person said, when I did the course last year, I was just starting out on a career change. The course gave me a broad view of the whole workings of the user experience and how all the stages fitted together. Another finding was that holding the certificate increases self-confidence in your day-to-day -day work. So this person said, it's given me confidence to participate in discussions on UX. I now have the means to actively engage with internal UX subject matter experts on appropriate methods for my projects. And some people pointed out that you learn specific tools, techniques, and skills that you can apply in your job. So this person said, I've run workshops using the persona development tools, exercises, user journeys, and storyboards, perhaps three times now in order to better inform design. And this is now built into the way I work with clients on new projects. So let's now talk about the examination. I know it's one of those things, 
people are interested in. So there are 40 questions on the exam paper in total. Uh, you have an hour to answer those 40 questions. Each question is of the multiple choice variety. I'll show you some examples in a minute. And the pass rate is 65%, which is 26 correct. So the graph you can see at the moment on screen shows the approximate number of questions that are drawn from each of the syllabus areas. And you'll notice that BCS don't draw the questions equally from the syllabus. So if you just look at the illustrating the context of use, information architecture and usability evaluation parts of the syllabus, they account for half the questions that you'll typically find in an examination. And there are three types of question that come up in the exam and they go from easy to hard. So the difficulty of each question is decided according to something known as Bloom's taxonomy. Now, Bloom's taxonomy is a kind of hierarchy of learning objectives. And it was developed by an American educational psychologist called Benjamin Bloom. It's used widely in schools and in universities to kind of think about the learning goals that you have. And because the BCS certificate is set at the foundation level, it only tests your knowledge at the remember, understand and apply levels of this pyramid, the bottom three areas. Now, that doesn't mean that these those things are trivial. So for example, um, if you're a brain surgeon, you still need to know how to label the various areas of a brain before you start opening up someone's skull and operating on it. You need to know the labels for things. There's a certain, no matter how sophisticated your knowledge is, there's a base level that you need to make sure that you understand properly, otherwise you can't do your job properly. So questions at the remember level, they check that you're able to recall the facts and the basic concepts of UX. So the purpose of those questions is to check you can speak the language of user experience. And questions at the understand level um, they need you to be able to explain an idea or a concept in UX. And the questions at the apply level, or they test if you can apply what you've learned in a practical design or research setting. They're the hardest questions on the paper. So let me now give you an example of the kind of questions uh, that come up. Oh, actually, before I do that, a quick advertising break. If this has piqued your interest, I'm running a BCS Foundation Certificate course early in the new year. And if you'd like to attend, um, let me post a link in the chat where you can find out more information. After I've done that, I'll dive in and I'll show you some of the questions that we'll be covering or that, that are covered in the exam. Okay, back to our regular programming. So here's an example of a question that comes up in the exam. Um, this is a remember question. And these are the easiest questions in the exam. They check you're able to recognize, remember and recall a term or concept. So the purpose again is to check you can speak the language of UX. You don't need to go on a training course to be able to answer these type of question memorizing a glossary is usually enough. Either you know the answer or you don't. So how about this question? Which law states that the time required to move to a target is a function of the target size and distance to the target? What I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, set you a, um, uh, a poll. So um, I've launched a Zoom poll. I'm gonna give you um, 60 seconds. Um, to take that, if people answer before we 60 seconds are up, obviously I'll stop, but um,
So I'm sharing the results on screen with you now. So most people went for C, um, one person went for D. Um, the um, correct answer here is uh, C, Fitzlaw is indeed uh, the answer to that particular question. Um, so uh, let's try it now with an alternative question. So this is a, um, another remember question. So the easiest level of question. So um, let me uh, relaunch a poll and see how you do with that one. So um, a researcher asks a participant to carry out tasks with a hand-drawn interface where the participant uses there is a mouse, what technique? So everybody got that correct. Clearly you are all on track to pass the uh, BCS Foundation Certificate and experience um, the correct answer there's paper prototyping. Now you won't be able to actually pass the exam only by answering the simplest questions, but obviously it makes sense to get those under your belt because then you can afford to get some of the harder questions wrong. Let's look at some of those um, harder questions um, now. So um, uh, let's move on to or, or put things up a notch. So now we're going to try some of these understand uh, questions. Um, and uh, for, for this particular question, um, these they, they require you to explain an idea or a concept. So here's an example from the mock exam. Uh, they require a bit more thought. You won't be able to answer it just by rote learning. So those results are shown on screen at the moment and the um, the actual results, oops, sorry, I, I went too fast for that one. The actual results, you can see here. So um, lowercase b, c and e are correct, but a lowercase a and d are incorrect. Option A is wrong because animations are impossible to replicate with a paper prototype. And option D is wrong because paper prototypes can't assess technical feasibility. So here's another understand question. Um, so let me stop sharing that and then relaunch it for you to have a go um, with. So uh, the question here is you're working on a government system that allows people to apply for a driving license, which of the following will be examples of user needs for such a service. Uh, by the way, the word lorry, um, if you're not from Europe, is a large flatbed truck carry in it's in the US. I think they call this a semi. With an articulated lorry that might that might help you as well.
So I'm sharing the results of the poll on screen. What was the actual result? So um, B and D here, well, they're kind of functional specifications. That refers to a specific implementation, and it's not an expression of what users need from the service. And A, you can think of as kind of some kind of abstract requirement that assumes the system's going to have some kind of navigation. It probably it may not indeed have any navigation, which means C is the correct um, answer uh, there. So a couple more questions to share um, with you. And we're now going to move on to the apply questions. And these are the hardest questions um, on the paper. So a design team is in the early stages of the design of an shopping basket with a digital interface that approached you to carry out user research. They suggest you interview 10 of their internal staff who regularly shop in supermarkets. How should you respond? I just need to mute. Um, so uh, the most people here went for D, and indeed the correct choice is uh, D, um, and that's to ensure really that. What, what BCS are trying to do there is check that people understand the most important people to observe during early stage research are the intended users of the system. Uh, so the reason um, B here, it would be better to observe staff as they shop um, is, uh, it, if, if it would be better, probably would be better to observe staff as they shop rather than interview them, but that's not as good as observing real users of the system. Okay, so everyone's doing very well. Let's move on to the uh, next question, probably the, uh, one, of the, one of the hardest ones. Which of the following aspects of usability are important for each scenario? Um, so you need to match the choices. People are still voting. I'll give people another another five seconds to get a vote in. Okay, let's see what we've got there. Um, so um, most people went for A, but um, a significant minority went for B and C. Um, in fact, the correct answer here is A. So um, uh, if I've, I've matched them up on this particular slide, so you can see how they. Uh, they go together to make the question a bit easier to read. So it's true, I guess the logic for this one is it's true that task completion rate 
is an important measure for all systems, but you could say that two and four, those systems are gonna be used by expert users. So they'll have experience and training to complete tasks. Um, efficiency is probably most important in a call center task. And that's why um, X is the best choice. And with games, part of the enjoyment is becoming immersed in the task. So task completion, maybe time to complete and incorrect decisions of poor metrics, but satisfaction would be a good choice there. there. And for the fingerprint system, all of those measures are important, but Z is probably the best choice because if you make an incorrect decision, you might end up identifying the wrong suspect. Um, so uh, I'm curious what you thought. Um, that's, that, 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 that's what six examples of questions that typically come up in the exam. They also come up in a range of formats like this. They're, they're very creative with the way they create their multiple choice questions. It's not just a four choices that you pick from. Sometimes you need to mix and match like this. But I'd like to hear from you. you know, what do you think? Is it, um, is, it, is it for you? What are your thoughts? What questions do you have about the foundation certificate in UX? So um, let's, uh, let, let's hear from you. Over, over to you, far away. Hi. Hi, David. Hi, Hanani. Um, so I was I was curious about um, about how are the how is the exam in terms of uh, the rhythm of the exam. So you were showing some questions and then you have time for uh, for each one. It was a, a little bit stressful <laughs> to read everything and to and to answer. Uh, we, we, that's the model that's going to happen, or do we have uh, one hour to finish all the forty questions? No, yeah, I, I, I kind of um, um, made it a bit more theatrical for the purposes of this webinar. So uh, it would be good. it would be very nerve inducing, wouldn't it, if you could? Yeah, yeah. There was a time ago. No. So you have uh, forty questions, one hour to complete them, and you can um, step through the exam at your own pace. You can flag a question to come back to later if you don't want to deal with it now. So you can answer the easier questions and then come back to the harder ones. So the only the only hard time limit is 60 minutes to complete the 40 questions. But it's true, like some of those questions, like the first one to do with Fitz Law, for example, you know, if, if you know the answer, then you answer it in 10 seconds. Whereas that last question we just did, because it requires a bit of matching, that might take you a couple of minutes in an examination. Yes. So yeah, your, the time taken to answer is gonna be different for different questions and you're able to do that in the exam. Great, thank you. What did you think about the standard of the questions? You think they were um, about right for a foundation level certificate? I think I chose them representatively. I didn't deliberately pick the easiest or the hardest questions. I think they're kind of typical questions. Uh, do you think that's? Um, do you think they're they're about pitched at the right level? Do you think they're too simple? Do you think they're too difficult? What what, what are your thoughts? Hey David. Uh, Hi. Yeah, I mean they they they're pretty spot on for foundation, I guess. Um, I I took your course, so I've gone over these questions uh, before. I took like the practice test, um, and I guess yeah, a lot of them make sense, even if you've been so like if you've been in the profession, maybe you haven't taken the course, then you'll read through them and you'll be like, yeah, this just it's kind of like intuitive. Um, so I'm guessing as a foundation, it really really makes sense. Um, I'm guessing then there are the same questions year after year. Right? Oh no! So, so they have a they have a, a bank of questions. Yeah. Um, which yeah. I think I think there's about 120 questions, and what they do is for each exam they they draw randomly. It's not randomly because it's weighted according to that graph I showed you. Some they 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 um, obviously want to balance the number of questions in the in the syllabus areas, but mm -hmm. um, no no two exams will be identical. So because they'll be drawing different questions from the question bank so there, there's a there's a fixed set of questions but not no no exam contains exactly the same questions gotcha okay i could see in the chat tom um tom print said how soon do you find out your exam results so um the exams at the moment are, are all being done online so you so uh, you before the pandemic, you could also take the BCS exam as a, as a paper exam uh, if you wanted to. 
but um, at the moment it's only online. Um, but when you do the exam online, it's externally invigilated. So somebody observes you while you're taking the examination. And at the end of the test, they tell you what your score was. But uh, that's kind of an unofficial result. You don't know officially whether you've passed or not for a week later. I don't know why, I don't know what they do to check that the score is official. Maybe they need to check the invigilator's report to know that you weren't cheating or something. But um, the answer to your question is, you know, unofficially, as soon as you've completed the exam, but you won't know officially for about a week afterwards. Um, and um, Vanessa said, um, are there banks of past exam questions in your course? Well, one that there are um, in the, uh, the, the course I'm running in January, there are 55 questions that are written like the kind of questions I've seen come up in the BCS exam, but they're not BCS questions, they're questions I created to reflect the same level of difficulty and the same kind of structure. So I'd say that they're like the questions you get in the exam, but then they're, they're not officially approved by BCS. That's just my assertion. But we also, in the exam, we also do a, a mock exam like the questions I showed you today. So those questions today are actually BCS questions and they have a mock exam you can take. And one of the things that we do on the course is we sit that mock exam as well. So by the time you finish the course, you would have taken 95 exam questions 55 I've created and 40 that BCS have created. Um, and that by that time, you should feel very well prepared for the actual examination itself. So question from um, um, Michael, how does your upcoming course compare to the one you have on Udemy? It's in fact, the syllabus is pretty much identical. The one I'm delivering in January is a bit newer because the one on Udemy, um, although I update it frequently, um, it's not been completely refreshed for about two years. So some of the examples might be a little bit older than the ones I'll be showing in the course in January. But um, if you did my course on Udemy, you would be, um, you should be just as well prepared for the BCS exam as if you did my face-to-face -face course. The reason I think people choose the face-to-face -face course over the Udemy course is sometimes it's just difficult to find the time to do an online course. You, know, you need to be very self-motivated to do a Udemy course because you need to make sure you set aside time every day to, to do the material. Whereas when you've signed up for a, an in-person course, you're gonna have me on the end of the line badgering you to actually do homework and so on that you might not do with the Udemy one. But you should be just as well prepared if you do either. So uh, if, um, if you're self, if you're self motivated, then the Udemy course would be just as good as the face to face course, other than the fact that if you do the face to face course with me, you get to hear all my new jokes, rather than the old boring ones that are on, on Udemy. Um, and Elaine says, if I take the certification foundation course, does that cover the material in all of the courses at user focus? No, it doesn't. So the certification course that BCS have produced is actually very broad in its scope. So it covers user research and it covers UX design. And that's quite a hefty syllabus. So it's the kind of thing that I guess you might think of as kind of what a UX unicorn needs to be. You know, you're doing both roles. Um, and as a consequence, the, the syllabus is um, as a foundation level syllabus, and it gives you that broad knowledge, but it doesn't give you in-depth knowledge in either UX research or in UX design. So I've got other courses. For example, there's a five-day user research course that I run um, via Zoom as well. And that five-day course clearly goes into much more detail in user research than the BCS Foundation certificate does. Because with that course, which is kind of equivalent to about a three-day course, with that one, I have to share the amount of material I spend on UX research with the amount of material that I spend on UX design. So um, uh, that certification course is, doesn't 
doesn't cover everything. It covers a kind of a, um, a broader subset. Um, I'm um, so Elaine has said I'm doing a six month UX UI design course beginning in February, which includes one week of user research. Maybe I can do advanced user research course um, with you. Yes, yeah, so there's, an, there's another course that I run called, which is an advanced user research, uh, or uh, is aimed at advanced user researchers, and it's much more workshop based. So, one thing that we do, or the things that we do in that course, is we do lots of um, design activities and research activities and workshops to allow people to really practice real life situations that they can they can address so it really kind of depends where you are in your ux or user research journey if you're at the more advanced level then the purpose of taking the bcs foundation certificate would just be to kind of test yourself and prove that you know what you're talking about but if you wanted to do the more in-depth stuff then there's obviously other training courses and other material that might that would be more appropriate for a practitioner. I've got this gap in my blind here and I'm kind of trying to move my head so I don't blind myself with it. So I'll, I'll, go, I'll go that way, there we go. Any other questions about the BCS Foundation Certificate? Well, if you do, what I'm going to do is, is type um, in the uh, chat, I've put in my email address. If you have any other questions um, and you were unable to ask them during the session, then by all means, drop me an email and I'd be delighted to, uh, to hear from you. Oh, and uh, thanks, Elaine. I'm glad you're reading my book, Think Like a UX Researcher. Um, but um, OK, in that case, uh, have a good weekend, everyone, and um, best of luck in your UX careers. See you soon.